Tonight we travel to the island of Madagascar, a tropical paradise with flourishing wildlife, but sometimes struggling humans. The population has been ravaged by easily curable diseases due to the prohibitive costs of medical transport. Now a team of doctors has found a workaround or over by using drones. Here's ABC's Alex Marquardt. Box after box of medical supplies packed up. Generators, camping gear, food and water strapped to the roof of a bus. This is essentially the support mission for getting the medicines that are in those two boxes to the people who need it. We're on our way to a poor remote village to see why this man, Dr. Peter Small, who's a tuberculosis specialist, is so excited. Madagascar is one of the most beautiful and impoverished countries on earth. Diseases easily treated and cured by modern medicine are still spreading unchecked through isolated communities here. This village typifies the challenge that's faced in delivering health care in remote areas and using innovative technology to see if we can leap over the roadblocks between here and those villages. Dr. Small actually wants to soar over those roadblocks using technology originally developed for war and now seen everywhere, drones. The drone here was designed by a Michigan-based company called Vayu, which has worked with USAID, the brainchild of Daniel Pepper, who came up with the idea while living in rural India. A drone could do the job um, and obviate the need for extensive travel at considerable risk, at considerable cost. Um, sacrificing daily wages, um, or if they're farmers, uh, having to give up a day uh, in, their, in their fields. The Vayu drone takes off like a quadcopter, can fly 40 miles like a plane with a five-pound payload, and land vertically. Ferrying samples, tests, and medication, eliminating visits to a clinic, all in mere minutes. Met with wide-eyed fascination and excitement. You see this as a scalable technology that can be used around the world and for a variety of, of medical conditions? I think it's highest yield in rural areas of developing countries, specifically where you have hilly terrains and poor roads. We can fly there, uh, pick up lab samples, fly back in the same afternoon and diagnose a disease and transport medicines by that evening. That's unthinkable uh, at the moment. Dr. Small isn't the only one who sees this as revolutionary technology. Another American group called Zipline is already using a different kind of drone in Rwanda. It doesn't land, but parachutes life-saving emergency supplies into distant areas, like the one we're on our way to visit. The night before, we watched how they planned for these missions. What they're doing here is using Google Earth to zoom in on these tiny little villages, literally finding the exact spot where these drones are going to land. <laughs> That's a no-fly zone. I don't like that. Madagascar is ravaged by tuberculosis. More than 13,000 people died of it in 2015, and around the world, 1.8 million, with millions more undiagnosed. The disease, which primarily affects the lungs, is very treatable if people have access to care. The first question everyone asks is, what's it going to cost? Evidently, if you're flying a bomb into a village, money is no object. But if you're delivering life-saving medicines, suddenly you have to do it for practically nothing. $25,000 to be exact. We cross a river and wind through fields down to a village called Ankozotsara, meaning nice tree. 60 mud huts with around 300 residents. It in looks incredibly removed in time. And from an infectious disease standpoint, they're still battling diseases of antiquity like plague. A warm but wary welcome from oh, the yeah, village so children. Little, uh, These are geese? Goosey? Oh. Geesey? <laughs> People here have died of tuberculosis before. There are now two known cases and five more suspected cases. The villagers gather so the health team can explain that they'll be carrying out tests and training. While a tent is set up as a makeshift doctor's office to collect saliva samples. 16-year-old Maurice Young is one of the suspected TB cases. He has like chest pain. And after that, there is a blood who comes out when she when he coughs. Yeah. He tells the team he hasn't tried to get treatment, that he drinks sugar water for the pain. So he is missing school and he's missing work because of these symptoms. Yeah. We go home with him to see what his living conditions are like. And it's immediately clear what the problem could be. Eight people live in this house, including Morishan, his mother, both of whom are suspect tuberculosis cases. Every house in this village is like this one where they have an open fire. Here they're cooking for dinner. 
and none of them have chimneys. So this entire room, this entire house is full of smoke. So as dawn breaks in the village, we go back to take more samples. See if he can bring something up <laughs> deep in his lungs and spit it into the tube. I don't see blood in this specimen, but this is not a normal thing for someone to cough up. This has me worried. Down the line, you're hoping that they can take the sputum themselves, stick it on the drone, and send it back. In a future world, I think there'll be somebody in this village who can recognize someone who might have TB, call in a drone, collect the sputum, and send it back. The team records a training video and shows the villagers how they would use the equipment that the drone would fly in. And if we can make it work for TV, there's no reason we can't make it work for other things. We could use it for delivering vaccines. We could use it for delivering uh, medications for women who are hemorrhaging after childbirth. Back at the lab, Dr. Small studies the samples for signs of tuberculosis. There is no clinician who could sit in that village and tell you definitively if those people had tuberculosis or not. It absolutely requires a laboratory test. After more tests, he finds that thankfully neither Mauricien nor his parents have TB. Beyond the hurdles of poverty, education, and technology, we saw for ourselves just how simple the obstacles can be. As if this project isn't complex enough, the drone can't fly in all this pouring rain, which is so common in this country. You can have all the modern technology you want, but it's often no match for Mother Nature. That hasn't dampened the ambitions of the project's leaders. The truth of the matter is that when you speak to government officials, they recognize the value proposition of this technology. There actually is a lot of excitement and a lot of eagerness to uh, start using this technology here, um, but it's not going to uh, happen overnight. <laughs> the excitement for all involved, so obvious, so contagious, this potential revolution Goose. is far more than a flight of fancy. For Nightline, I'm Alex Marquardt in Ranamafana, Madagascar.